This is Twit. The thing I'm bringing this week is a very inexpensive smartphone from a company called Doogee. That's so so you may me remember Doogee or Doogie uh, made uh, some very inexpensive smartphones as well as some ridiculously rugged and large batteried smartphones. In this case, they're coming across with the X96 Pro, which is a sub $100 smartphone which offers a nice big six and a half inch screen, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, which is expandable with micro SD. Always great to see. It does have micro USB for charging, but at under $100 for the smartphone, I don't think there's too much we can complain about wow. at this point. Yeah, It has a courage port. That's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Uh, so you can use wired headphones with this. And it's fantastically plastic. It is pretty much all plastic apart from some hardened glass on the screen. But when you unbox it, as I did on the Tech Travel Geeks YouTube channel, it has a screen protector already applied. And that 720 screen or HD ready screen is pretty good. It's got punchy colors. It's an IPS panel. But if you're just watching Disney+, Plus, Netflix, uh, BBC iPlayer, it is perfectly fine for watching video. And that decent uh, 4,500 milliamp hour battery delivers at least one day's use uh, in my experience. One of the really good things is that it doesn't have a glass back. It's a plastic back. And it doesn't even have a SIM ejector tool because you need to pry the plastic casing off mm -hmm. to get access to the SIM that's, card that's, and memory card. That's old school. Yeah, that's it's old proper school. old school. Old school. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how they kept the cost down because that's you're getting fair. a lot of smartphone for less than $100. Mm -hmm. And for playing games like Mobile Legends, it's perfectly fine. You can even play Call of Duty Mobile in low screen resolution and frame rate. What um, I was particularly thrown, uh, thrown out of sync uh, by this phone is the chipset. So... Usually in this price category, you get smartphones with MediaTek chipsets. If you're particularly unlucky, you'll have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 215 chipset. But this is a Unisoc chipset, which I had almost forgotten about until I got this phone. So Unisoc are actually specialized in not the most efficient chipsets that go in things like set-top boxes for cable TV in uh, some sometimes questionable Android TV boxes loaded with Kodi and other um, sources of media and entertainment. And updating it in the past has been quite an issue, as in it was always different, difficult to get the right drivers and uh, build the Android uh, distributions to go on them. Whereas Doogee seem to have got a good supply of Unisoc chipsets and Unisoc seem to be supplying them with the support they need to maintain this smartphone. So you get a decent smartphone with this chipset made for a cable TV box or an Android TV box, which works perfectly fine. And that's surprising to me because usually in this price segment, MediaTek is king. And it's interesting to see another chipset manufacturer in this space in the Android world. And realistically, I hope they, they actually expand because apart from MediaTek and Qualcomm, we have Samsung with the Exynos who mostly supply Samsung phones and the occasional brand in China like, like Meizu. And Huawei have essentially stopped making their own chipsets, the, the Kirin chipsets. So I think it's good to have a bit of competition here and to be able to have a sub hundred dollar smartphone that offers a lot of value. Hmm. So I unboxed this smartphone last week. I'm going through my usual long term review of using it as a main device for at least a month before I review it. And but so far, first impressions are very, very positive. So interesting to see this l relatively small startup in Shenzhen coming out with a sub hundred dollar smartphone, which offers amazing value. And especially in these tough times, that's the market segment that's most interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. When a lot of people are having issues with uh, the pandemic recovery, with 
being able to afford smartphones, having this type of option is always a good thing to see. Unisoc is not uh, something that I've been very familiar with. I mean, I'm definitely not familiar with seeing phones um, that have that processor inside. So I'm very, very curious about don't that. Don't think it's here. Mm, yeah, no, we I don't think so. We just got I mean, MediaTek being used here, and that's in the low-end spectrum devices. Yeah. Like, you'll see that in low-end Lenovo tablets and such. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Unisoc are probably in devices that you never thought to check the chipset on. Right, Probably yeah, good true. point. Such as Android TV boxes, uh, home automation, other things. Uh, it's not the most efficient chipset. In this case, it's a 28 nanometer one. But uh, in a low-powered smartphone, that should be more than adequate, especially if you have eight eight cores on it. Hmm. And then Doogee or Doogee, however you want to say it, um, it just as a brand tends to make a lot of phones in this kind of price category. But this isn't uh, a device that we really see in the U.S. Um, so, but it won't, really it won't be in network stores. But as far as I'm aware, they sell quite well on Amazon globally. Uh, it's not okay. not just in the U.S. So this in the SIM free category across Europe, Asia, and uh, other markets, especially in South America, Duji are surprisingly successful mm -hmm. for a relatively small company uh, just because of that price sensitivity in that market segment mm -hmm. and the fact that they have an established brand at this point. It's just a very interesting one uh, to, to see actually come out with a Unisoc chipset mm. because this may be the example that other companies like Yule Phone and others will follow going forward. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Thank you for that. Everybody should uh, definitely check out more on the Doogee X96 Pro. Sounds like Mateo's going to do the uh, the longer uh, term review of a month. That's awesome. That's a that's a cool thing to double down on because uh, most most reviewers out there end up spending a week with a product and then giving a review and doing a longer term review uh, gives it a nice different perspective on it. So. Thanks. I mean, yeah. we, we did the same with our Pixel 5 and Samsung S20 FE. Mm -hmm. Those were six-month reviews. We didn't bother reviewing them in the first month. Everyone was Everybody's doing Everybody's doing it. Yeah, totally. All right. So long-term, I think, is, in, in my experience, is a good way to actually get that muscle memory mm -hmm. and learn what a device is really like in day-to-day -day use. Yeah, yeah, indeed.